just want to thank everyone for coming out today for a fabulous event. And I would like to um, introduce Jeremiah Millen. He's um, been a, the director at Envision Matsu for almost two years or two years now. And he's taken Envision Matsu to a new direction with collaboration, innovation, and proactive work in our community. I'm really proud and feel honored to be a part of Envision Matsu today. So here's Jeremiah Millen. all for taking time out of your Friday on a, on a holiday weekend um, to come see this fabulous uh, project. I'm the director of Envision Matsu, which is formal, was formerly known as Friends of the Matsu, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that transfer, transformation here in a second. Um, we're here for the unveiling of, of what we've called the Cottonwood Creek Urban Pathways Project, um, and this piece, Reflection, which we're going to get to hear about is a fabulous work from Holly Gitline, which is here, Holly. We're going to hear a couple words from her about this sort of this design and the inspiration for the piece. Um, and I just want to say, you know, living in the Matsu, I feel like we are so lucky. We live in such a beautiful place. It is the envy of much of the nation. Um, we have tight communities, uh, which makes partnerships very possible. We have, what, 2,000 miles of trails, uh, wild salmon streams, um, and that's one of the reasons I love living here so much. Um, first, I want to recognize that this project right here is all about partnerships. It would have not been possible without the generous support from our partners. Uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Bill Rice is here. We're going to hear from him. They provided the grant funding um, for this project. Uh, our local artist who we hired for the project, Holly Getline, was great to work with and she put a lot of energy and time into making the beautiful railing. Um, the city of Wasilla, uh, Archie Giddings and the public works staff uh, volunteered a lot of staff hours to help us install this project. Um, I want to mention a former, well not a former employee, but an employee of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service who took a transfer to California, Jeff Hayes, uh, he did a lot of great projects out here in the valley and supported healthy salmon projects and habitat conservation, and so we'll miss him. Uh, but this project is, is uh, part of his legacy because he was originally the, our, our program officer. Um, Catherine Inman sitting back here from Matsu Conservation Solutions. She helped us get the ball also rolling on this project. And I want to thank our speakers um, that are here today that are going to share a few words with us. Um, quickly, just to talk about, I won't go way into it, uh, to talk about the transformation from Friends of Matsu to Envision Matsu. Uh, this was a result of a two-year organizational development process that we did uh, to increase the overall effectiveness of the organization and really boost and provide the highest value possible that we could through our services to the community. Um, and when you go through a process, process like that, it's a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of strategic thinking, and you, you sort of peel the onion all the way back to its core. And you say, you start and say, what's our core purpose for being? Um, and what we determine is our core purpose for being is sustainable community development. Of course, that means many things to many people. and, and um, needs to be described further, uh, both by the organization and through our work. But I think if I was to explain it right now, um, how we define it as Envision Matsu and how we see our work is, is to be focused on developing projects and initiatives that promote and enhance healthy and livable communities uh, and result in strong local economies. Uh, we do believe that the health of our communities and the health of our environments intricately tied to our economic prosperity here in the Matsu. We developed a new strategic plan. We have an entirely new board. Um, Bonnie's our board president. Our board aged probably Phil Munger uh, is on the board. He's actually the, one of the original board members when I came on, but I would say the average age maybe changed from 60 to 30s, <laughs> something like that. So that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So keep the average up. <laughs> and we need the wisdom. 
um, also in the institutional knowledge from folks like um, Phil. Um, we've developed three new programs that are in varying stages of development that are going to guide all of our future work. And we developed, maybe most importantly, as part of starting that whole process, we developed a strong set of core values that we see are going to um, guide the entire organization and all of our work. And just to tell you what some of these are, positive solutions, partnership, innovation, responsibility, leadership, and respect. And I think this project, what's exciting about it for me and why it's exciting to roll out the sort of new name and that vision at the same time, is this, pro this project really embodies all of those core values. Um, like I said, it was completely built off of partnerships from working with the city of Wasilla, people like Holly, down to Verda at Verda's Cakes, who made us this beautiful salmon cake, uh, to the trophy shop that made the placard. Uh, and that's one of the best things about working on local projects in a tight community, is you get to network with all of these great people uh, and make friendships, and, and those endure over time. Um, just a quick note about uh, the significance of Cottonwood Creek. Um, I think Bill Rice could tell you a lot more about that than I could. Um, but we have all five species of salmon here in the one of the most heavy, heavily populated uh, places in Alaska. Um, and I've stopped people sometimes on the trail when they're down here walking to their neighborhoods or taking a break from work. And that's one of the things people are most excited about is being able to see wild salmon here. And part of the goal of this new project was both to enhance that user experience, build a community space that people appreciate, um, and make it user friendly to be able to see through the railing and see uh, spawning salmon um, during the season. Um, so just to kind of wrap it up here, um, why the name Envision Matsu? Um, we wrestled with a lot of names, we shopped it around a lot, we got a lot of feedback, and we believe that that name uh, invokes strong feelings of progress, action, and inspirational work that hopefully will make the Matsu a better place to, to live, work, and play. Um, and what we envision for the future is a Matsu with vibrant, thriving communities, towns close to clean waters and lakes and rivers and parks, um, and a Matsu that invests its taxpayer money wisely, sees the economic benefits tied intricately uh, and competitiveness tied intricately with high quality of life. So in short, we envision a Matsu that's focused on thoughtful development and thriving communities. And I, and I think together, by focusing on shared values like salmon and community, we can reach many of those goals so uh, we, we hope you enjoy this project. We're really proud of it. Uh, we're, we're happy to work with all of our partners and uh, we look forward to working with all of you on the future and uh, sharing some of our work in the future. So now we're gonna get into um, a few speakers, but I just wanna thank you all for coming on the Friday and hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thanks. And next, uh, next we're gonna hear from Bill Rice. Um, who's chief of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He's been involved in many of the past works for Habitat.